Good morning and welcome to To The Point. It was a long and busy week in Lansing. It clearly took a toll on my voice. The good news is there are two lawmakers with us this morning that can more than make up for what I can't talk about as they explain what really happened in the closing hours of that legislative session, beginning with Republican Senator Dave Hildenbrand. Senator, it was a interesting week to wrap up the legislative session. I'm going to lay out a few scenarios. You can certainly disagree with them. But I, I talked with a Democrat who you'll hear from in the second part of the show, and I, I, I set it up like this. There are the politics, policy, all of that, which we'll talk about. But there's almost an underlying issue that involves both politics and policy, but there are 26 Republican members over in the Senate, supermajority. You can pass anything you want to with uh, immediate effect. But all of those 26, on some level, were elected promising smaller government and less spending. Now, that wasn't the central theme for all of them. For some of them, it was. Mm -hmm. But on some level, I'm guessing that every one of them said that. So when you ask them to raise a billion dollars in taxes, that becomes kind of a heavy lift, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. Um, you know, we all agree that we've got to invest more in our roads. And uh, there are problems out there all across the state. I travel like you and all your viewers, and um, we see the problems. So we all agree university, Republicans and Democrats, House and Senate members, and obviously the governor as well, that we've got to do more for our roads. The question comes in, so we agree on the problem, the key is how do you get to the solution? And that's where we have a lot of differences of opinions. And you know the proposal before us um, that was pushed the hardest this week was to increase the gas tax by over double. Currently we pay 19 cents per gallon at the pump and the proposal that was being pushed uh, by a few of the members and some of the leadership was to raise that from 19 cents to 41 cents uh, phased in over four years. And that just didn't set right with me. I can't go back to the people who sent me to Lansing and say, instead of going through all the state budget and finding savings, finding efficiencies, prioritizing roads as a spending in the process and using uh, surplus monies because our economy is getting better, we're getting a di little additional money back to our, uh, into our state coffers. To do that first before we even think about asking the drivers and taxpayers of Michigan to pay for more. That's where I want to focus my attention and um, our resources in Lansing to, to work in that area. And I think what's being missed out there a lot, although the proposal to raise the gas tax didn't pass the state Senate this week, what did pass over the last six months was a number of bills. And we had our nonpartisan bean counters, our Senate fiscal agency, verify the numbers. But over the last six months, we passed bills over that period of time that will invest almost a billion dollars, $978 million more into our state's infrastructure. Now that's not just a one big chunk of money that's you know, plopped in our comprehensive transportation fund, but it was a shifting of resources. It was taking some of the uh, sales tax money that's spent at the pump and making sure that goes to roads. It's uh, using um, areas in the state government, general fund money where we have found efficiencies. And that, I think, has been overlooked in this whole debate. But for this construction season, this spring, this summer, and this fall, most of that billion of extra dollars, which, by the way, is almost a 25% increase over what is generally spent in roads and bridges in this state, I think that's being overlooked. But that's a significant and a huge investment in our roads and bridges for this construction season. And I think there will be a significant amount of improvements that happen because of that investment. Just so I'm clear, I want to make sure when you talk about finding efficiencies, finding other places within the existing revenues, it's not your supposition that you'll come up with 1.2 or 1.5 billion within that budget, but you want to find that money first before you decide to raise revenues. Absolutely. I mean, going back to the taxpayers of Michigan for more money ought to be our last resort. I mean, I, I draw the analogy like, you know, a family, if you have financial problems, you don't go to your boss the first you know, the first thing you do isn't go to your boss and ask for a raise. Or another analogy is in a business, if you have financial challenges, you don't first go to your customers and increase the cost of your goods uh, or your services. So we need to do the due diligence internally to make sure that the, the system is working right. Our roads and bridges are being built uh, in, by, in quality and uh, we're doing it for the, the best cost out there. 
uh, that we have um, you know all of the efficiencies that we can find throughout the different state departments and agencies that we do that due diligence first before we even consider going out and asking for increased revenue from the hardworking men and women of Michigan. Doubling the gas tax to over 40 cents would, uh, I think by your estimation, guarantee that we have $4 gasoline in perpetuity, which is something that many of us cringe about. And if you found efficiencies to come up with, take your pick, 30%, 40, 50, whatever much, is there another preferred revenue source that you would look at before you looked at gas taxes, sales tax? We'd heard talk about registration fees. Is there someplace else that you'd be more comfortable looking at revenues? My focus is going to be on creating the best business environment in Michigan so we have job growth and economic opportunities for our residents. If we continue to focus our attention and resources and energy on creating a Michigan that's strong and vibrant, we won't have to worry about going back to the taxpayers to look for more revenue. We'll have a vibrant economy. We'll have plenty of revenue to support the priorities of this state, the priorities of the people of this state, including to make sure that we have a sound infrastructure uh, in our roads and bridges. So I, I don't want to think about, you know, if we have to raise taxes, what area would we do that? I really want to focus my energy on making sure we have a vibrant Michigan that we can all be proud of, and then we'll have the resources necessary to invest in the priorities of the state. Well, I think a lot of people would agree with you. Grow the economy, grow the tax base, and don't worry about that, but there is a catch-22. To grow the economy and attract business, you've got to have the infrastructure. And I've talked to people who say that they sometimes plan visits with companies looking at our area by avoiding the worst roads in our area. That makes it tough if your roads are not as good as Indiana or Ohio or Illinois. And if they're looking in our area, I mean, that is part of the economic recovery, right? It is, no question. And that's why I go back to my earlier statement. I mean, a billion dollars is a lot of money. When you talk about a 25% increase in, a, in an agency or a dark department or program of state government, we don't see those types of increases very often. And so I think it's, it's a sign and a signal and proof that we've made investing in our roads and bridges a priority of state spending. And I think you're going to see a lot of improvements in uh, this construction season by this investment we made. Billion dollars is a huge commitment by the taxpayers of this state, and it should not be overlooked. I, I do want to talk to you about the other side of the coin, and that is you got a lot done in this legislative session. You just talked about the money that you did come up with, where you found the savings. But it wasn't just about roads. A financial package for the city of Detroit that the courts still have to decide if they're going to accept. And a minimum wage bill, which may not have been the first choice of many of your colleagues, but for a lot of reasons, it got passed too. So those were two very significant things you did get done. Uh, is that part of the narrative that you need to remind people of? Because right now, you're right, everybody's focused on didn't get the roads. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm a proud Michigander, and um, we've been working hard over the last three to four years to really turn Michigan around. Uh, we were the laughing stock of the country in, you know, in 2008 and 2009. And, and we have made some progress. Uh, you know, our unemployment rate, the, the, the peak of our unemployment rate was in 2009 when it peaked at just over 15%. And that was embarrassing. Uh, we have now uh, reduced that by over half, uh, but we still have a ways to go. So we're making progress. Um, you know, the state budget is balanced. We just approved the state budget again for next year's fiscal year, which starts October 1. So for the fourth year in a row, we got our state budget balanced and done almost four months ahead of schedule before the fiscal year starts. So we're doing some things that are good government, re reducing regulations. We're creating an environment where this economy can grow again. And um, so we've made some progress, but we have a ways to go. I wanna ask you, and I don't expect for you to pull the curtain completely back, but you've been around Lansing a long time. You were a staffer, <clears throat> you know the process. You've been in caucuses when you're in the minority over in the House now in the majority over in the Senate, give me to the degree that you can. And, I, and the reason I, I point out you can't, because I understand what happens in the caucus room stays in the caucus room. But to the degree that you can, balance what happened this last week over your other experiences. I mean, it had to be pretty intense because first of all, you spent a heck of a lot of time in that caucus room. There are a bunch of you. And there were some pretty divergent opinions, I have to believe. Yeah. Well, it's. It's been a great experience, and it's always, I always enjoy 
and it's an honor to, to work at the, our state capitol, the beautiful building that we serve in and, and work with great people. I, I really respect highly the people that I, I get the honor of serving with. And we're very passionate about our positions. There's no question about it. So when we go in that back room and um, have our heated discussions, um, people are passionate, but we keep reminding ourselves that this is important work to do, but don't make it personal, that we're not wrong in our positions. We just come from different backgrounds and different upbringings and have just different ideals and philosophical views on issues and how to solve the problem. So. We do our best. It does get heated at times and people get emotional. There's no question about it. But when those moments come, we do remind people to, to um, be respectful and, um, and don't take things personally. It is no surprise the Democrats will say this road process shows a lack of leadership. They say that uh, Senator Richardville, and they like to include Governor Snyder in this, uh, didn't lead um, strongly enough. To that, you say what? They're both great leaders, and I have high respect for our Senate Majority Leader and our Governor. And we have done a lot to invest in our roads and infrastructures, like I mentioned. Um, but the proposals that they were pushing just didn't get, get enough support. I don't think it's a lack of leadership. It's just that they had some very aggressive, ambitious ideas, which are bold, which leaders do. But um, this is a process. If they were heads of companies who they could just unilaterally make decisions, they would have made those decisions. But this is a republic and uh, we have to have 20 votes in the Senate, 56 in the House, and a governor all on board in order to make that decision happen or a, a solution to a problem happen. And we just couldn't, they just couldn't quite get there. I don't see it a lack of leadership at, at all. Um, I think they're both bold and great servants, uh, public servants for Michigan. That is the Republican view. Democrats, as you would expect, have a different look. You'll hear that when we return to The Point. Welcome back to To The Point. Republicans in the state Senate say they got a lot done in this last legislative session, but Democrats say they showed an amazing lack of leadership. You be the judge as you listen to Democrat Representative Brandon Dillett. We're going to talk about the policy mm -hmm. of this past session. We'll talk about the politics. But my first question may involve both, but it's a question that I've been pondering uh, for several days. If you take a supermajority, in the state Senate, 26 members, uh -huh. and all 26 of them were at least in some part elected on the premise that they supported smaller government and probably less spending. And then you ask them to raise taxes by over a billion dollars, about 9% increase if you looked at it from a general fund. And I, again, the politics and policy we'll get to, but as you and I are both observers of politics, that was just a heavy lift from the get-go, wasn't it? Well, certainly, it's never easy to raise taxes. But I would remind viewers that you know Republicans in the legislature, in both the Senate and the House, did raise taxes already to the tune of over a billion dollars when they raised the pension tax, when they cut the EITC, when they eliminated deductions for middle-class families. So they already have a record of raising taxes, which I think made it more difficult for them to do uh, the road funding proposal that, by and large, is the voters' number one priority right now. Um, if they hadn't done that major tax shift back in 2011 to give corporate interests a massive tax giveaway, I think they would have had more political capital to be able to do something that had benefit to the, almost every citizen in the state of Michigan. So I do really think it was a failure of priorities. When they had an opportunity to raise taxes on seniors in the middle class to give corporations a tax break, you couldn't get them to the green button fast enough. But when it was about raising taxes for something that uh, will invest in Michigan and, and fix our roads, you couldn't get them going on vacation fast enough. So I do think it's always a heavy lift, but you know, a past is prologue, and I think they made some policy choices two years ago that make it much more difficult to do something that the vast majority of Michigan voters want, and the governor wants. It's an interesting premise to, to look back and say that that caused problems uh, in this most recent session. Uh, we heard earlier on this show uh, that Republicans will point to a number of what they see as successes. But let's talk a little bit about how this functioned because prior to you being in the State House, uh, Democrats controlled that chamber. 
Mm -hmm. And there were some similarities in what we saw from the mid 2000s, 2007, 2008, where the leader over uh, in the House would just throw up bills and see if they could come up with the votes. Now, for our viewers, that's not the typical way you do it. You normally do a whip count, go out and talk to your members and say, will you vote for this? Mm -hmm. And you'll say, yes, I will, if you'll make sure this happens. And so when you put something up, you know what the outcome is going right. to be. We saw back in the mid-2000s, as I say, 2007, 2008, that wasn't the case. Didn't appear to be the case over in the Senate this week either. No, it was, it was frankly pretty surprising because the understanding when the House sent over a relatively modest uh, package for roads, I, I didn't support the actual funding mechanism of that because I said if we're going to do something, let's do it right. Let's actually do something that's sustainable and is going to bring in the amount of revenue uh, that's going to allow us to fix our roads, not just this year, but for years going forward. But the premise was that the House was going to send over a foundational package, and Senator Richard Bill and Senate Republicans were talking about, you know, uh, quote unquote, taking the bull by the horns and, and getting this done. And um, apparently they didn't do enough whip counts or talking to their members because when they threw this up on the board, it failed a number of times. And, you know, I know there's been some uh, in Lansing, some Republicans who said, oh, well, the Democrats could have done more. But you know, the reality is the, uh, Democrats in the Senate put up three quarters of their caucus. Now, they only have 12 members, but they put up eight votes. Republicans couldn't even get to half of their members to do it. So uh, I do think that it was a failure of leadership in the Senate. I think the governor bears some responsibility for this, too, for not getting engaged earlier and making sure uh, that the votes were there to get this done. Nobody wanted us to go home for the summer and take a vacation with potholes still all over Michigan's roads, but that's unfortunately what's happened. When you talk about the Democrats' partic participation in this, <clears throat> there isn't a politician alive that wants to be the only guy standing that raised taxes. So, I mean, that really is a political consideration sure. that if you are in the majority, you could do this. You could even give it an immediate effect over in the Senate, but you're not going to do it unless you get some on that aisle to go along with you. And that's the practical part, right? That's correct. And, uh, you know, in, in fairness, Democrats have been eager to engage in this negotiation because we know it's the governor's number one priority. Uh, but it's not about the politics. It's about the policy. And we want to make sure that our roads are functioning well. This is a, this is a priority not of only the people that... Um, drive on the roads, but the Michigan Chamber of Commerce has listed as the number one priority. Not exactly a organization that is friendly to Democrats in the state, but we've put aside that, you know, uh, partisan interest to say, look, we got to get these roads fixed. We're willing to be an active participant in helping you get this passed. But the reality is Republicans do hold a supermajority in the Senate. They have a majority in the House. They have the governor's office. They've been able to ram through things that were vastly more unpopular in this state. But when it came to this one, um, you know, I can only describe it as a real failure of leadership because that's what it is. If you um, have those levers of power at your disposal, you should be able to get this done, especially when public polling um, and the media reports are very consistent. Voters and residents in the state want the roads fixed. Now, they don't always want to have to pay for it. We know that. But that's the, that's the burden that legislators, if they're going to do their job, have to make those tough decisions. Unfortunately, they didn't this week. Well, and that is the ultimate problem is that most everybody will agree that roads want to be fixed, but there are certain people within the Republican Party, not necessarily office holders, but some of them, but part of that base that says, find the money in the budget right now. But that creates quite a problem because there isn't necessarily, and I don't want to get too far into Budget 101, but that $50 billion budget isn't all discretionary funds. No, very little of it in, is. In fact, only about $13 billion, somewhere in that is in the general fund that you can actually access so if you take that 9% or whatever it is and put it towards roads, you would have to fundamentally redesign government elsewhere in order to do that. Right? Absolutely. And, you know, road funding in this state and virtually every other state in the country is never a general fund obligation because the general fund goes ups and down, up and down. We saw what happened during the Great Recession. We see the general fund growing a little bit now, but it's unpredictable. Having a stable revenue source and the gas tax, which... Um, is primarily a user fee because the more you use, the more you pay, um, has, has been the mechanism that we use primarily to fund roads. It has to be something that's consistent and stable. You have to be able to plan projects out four and five years. General fund is not predictable enough. And we would have to make massive cuts to other things that voters care about, whether it's public safety or education, to be able to finance that going forward. Everybody knows we've got to bring in more revenue to do it. It's not popular to do it. But look, Republicans have a history of investing in infrastructure. It's been a long time, but you know, we wouldn't have the highway system without 
without Dwight Eisenhower. We wouldn't have many of the investments we had in infrastructure without Teddy Roosevelt. Unfortunately, now today's modern Republican Party is driven more by Tea Party rhetoric that says uh, the less government or no government at all instead of the kind of responsible leadership that says, look, there are public things we have to invest in. Sometimes it's difficult to raise the revenue, but we can't continue to have a system of roads and infrastructure like this uh, for the future. It's going to cost us more money in the long run, and it's going to cost businesses to not want to choose to locate a mission. Uh, you bring up a fascinating point that we don't have time to discuss, but it would be <clears throat> interesting to see how or if Dwight Eisenhower could function in today's Republican Party. That's another <laughs> show. Uh, the one thing I do want to ask you, though, before we get away, is uh, they talked about raising a sales tax mm -hmm. by 1%, uh, up to so an additional percent, to 7% across the board, uh, rather than right. uh, a gasoline tax, because the gasoline tax, as first proposed, could add 40 more cents to a gallon of gas by 2018, and it's a pretty good chunk of change. Um, I think if I remember our conversation, you are not in favor of the, registra the registration fee right. increase because that's a big chunk all at once mm -hmm. and probably disproportionately hits people with less disposable income. <clears throat> so is it, in your mind, the gas tax the best mechanism to do this? Well, I don't know if it's the best, but I think mm -hmm. it's generally um, the way that's fairest because it does uh, hit people who drive more. For me as a legislator, I put 35,000, 40,000 miles in my car every year. I'm willing to pay that increased share of the burden because I use the roads more. But I don't think we should be asking senior citizens or other people who don't drive very much or maybe only use their automobiles sparingly um, to pay significantly more, um, which would be the case with the sales tax or other revenue sources. I think the gas tax, while painful at times, is the fairest way to distribute road money, and it, it, it impacts the people that use the roads the most, and that's the way it should be. You don't spend a lot of time as a cheerleader for Republicans, but here's what they say about this session. Uh, they say <clears throat> they got a lot done. They got minimum wage taken care of. Uh, they got a big package for Detroit. We'll yet to see if that is going to be accepted. And uh, they got the budget done in record time, a budget which I believe you said uh, early on wasn't great, but was better than some of the older budgets. So uh, they say, hey, we got a lot done just because this issue didn't get done. You can't say that we didn't didn't do something. They certainly can't say that they didn't do something. Always, stuff always gets accomplished. And I'm glad they're taking credit for the minimum wage increase now when they were fighting it tooth and nail until we actually were able to negotiate something that I think was fair for all Michigan workers. But there was a, there was a lot of smaller things that got done. But the big ticket item this year on the governor's agenda and on the voters' agenda was getting our roads fixed. And on that, they did not uh, deliver like they should. All right, pull out your crystal ball. Last question. As we sit here in June, the legislature is not going to have any meaningful uh, gatherings in Lansing until after the primary. And between the primary and the general election, there will be less political will to do anything that looks yes. to be difficult. So on the first week of December, will we be sitting in a similar environment talking about how taxes were raised to fix roads in lame duck? Boy, I hope not. I don't think we should be doing big policy items in lame duck. I think it's, 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 it's really an untransparent way of operating a government. Um, I still think we can get this done. Democrats have said we're willing to, we don't need to go on vacation. We could be in Lansing. This is an arbitrary deadline that was put out there to get this done by last week. We should be coming back next week and the week after and the week after until we get something done. No matter when you vote for um, this roads package, it's going to be a difficult vote, but that's what we're elected to do and we should do it before we stand for election, not afterwards. We're back with more to the point and a final note in just a moment. So the legislature is done for the next few weeks. Not much is expected to happen when it comes to finding more money for roads. In fact, not much will be going on in Lansing at all, but they will be busy. It is, after all, an election year. Primary comes up in August and a big general election this November. We'll continue to follow developments about policy and politics every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. I invite you to join us next and every Sunday morning right here for To The Point.